Hi everyone, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is your show. I'm here to serve you and tonight we have an amazing guest. Tonight's guest, uh, he has got multiple businesses. He's delivered so many different talks in different capacities um, and he has been on a very special journey, a journey of self-discovery from a very, very young age and he is someone who, who's not shy to go deep. He's not somebody who is just, uh, you know, talks about stuff at a surface level, but he likes to go deep. That's what I love, which is why I decided to bring him on. He is going to add a tremendous value to us and actually coach us and mentor us. And we want to obviously go ahead and, you know, welcome him onto the show. Neil, thank you so much for being here. But first of all, thank you for taking the time to be here with us. It's, it's my pleasure, Salal. Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. So, Neil, let's start from the beginning. Can can we start by with your story, okay? Because that's that's the best part, I think, to l- hear about other people's stories. So, can we start with your story on how did you actually start on your journey? And you talk about you know you reinvented yourself multiple times, you know, uh, up till now, and you've done some amazing stuff. Um, you own multiple businesses. You are a dad. To a boy girl you know a set of twins um, you've studied medicine and biology previously you've spoken at TEDx like talks you know um, and you specifically talk about the science and the metaphysics of rewiring your brain which is just super fascinating so can we just talk about how did you get started and and you know how did you end up here Wow yeah that's a I, I love the question um, and how, by, my first thought is, how do I condense that? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, I, but I think it's, I think it's, I think it's significant to mention though is that my my upbringing was by my father in a way that he sort of demanded that we serve, that we are the solution. Mm. He was born at the base of the Himalayas on a dirt floor farm, and through his own volition, he. Um, outside of his own caste and his own thinking, he went and got a PhD, uh, a, a doctor of veterinary medicine, and then a PhD in genetics. Right, wow. and that required an extreme amount of, of breaking out of where his thinking or where he was, because his father was sort of ninth grade illiterate, his mother died in adolescence. So, and to come to this country and then completely on his own. So, when my brother and I when we were raised by my father, he raised us like we were on a farm, even though we weren't. We fixed everything. We found the answers, we repaired stuff, we didn't call anybody for anything. Wow. He was um, he was a massive electronics buff, he built, a th- I built a thousand watt amplifier with my dad, soldering every oh, wow. mylar and bio together, you know, we, we re- uh, riding, riding lawnmower wasn't working, so it was this push to not only find the answer, but be ready with the next step, and that was mm-hmm. sort of, I think, the thing that started vectoring me in this direction, but um, my dad likes to tell a story um, when I was really young, that I was playing with somebody and they weren't happy and I was, you know, five or six and I just looked over at them and I said, can't you be happy with what you have? Mm. And he was like, wow, okay, this kid is, is different. So my dad and I's relationship <laughs> was about exchanging ideas, right? He would give me these, uh, these quotes out of Reader's Digest and other places and we would not bond over football, but um, over thinking and opening up your mind and I would give my dad an idea and we would pass it back and forth. So that's wow. what probably started. Wow. Wow. That that sounds really amazing. That sounds powerful. Uh, Because like you said, you know, from a very young age, being exposed to those big ideas and having a relationship with your dad, which is based on going deep, essentially, with ideas and, you know, concepts and things like that. That's amazing because at the moment, you know, uh, it's it's something that's really, really rare where people are willing to sit down and bond and go deep about stuff. So that's really powerful. I'm wondering, you know, looking back at your childhood, going through how you know the experience of having a father who really broke the the the, the current paradigm of his time, and kind of exposed you to all those big ideas, and now you're in a position where you're a father yourself. You have you have you know kids yourself. So how does how did that kind of your early childhood prepared you to be a father today to your children? Sure, sure. And I, I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good amalgam of both my dad and my mom. My mom has, you know, has a high emotional quotient. My dad was very cerebral. 
right? Yeah. And so I brought, the, brought those two together. I, I think I think being a father now, um, looking back at my childhood, I've taken sort of the best of both of my parents and blended that. Um, but one of the things that I think I've taken away from my childhood was I never lost my inner child. Mm. So the way I have it, the way I have it is is that is that we look as an adulthood, which I consider uh, to a large degree at this myth, myth, mythology that we pass down. Yeah. But we look as adulthood as having the answers. But I look at my kids when they were born as masters of energy and emotion. They mm. really could create and and get into moods and and move through their emotions. And they, and if I was tense and I came to them, they immediately figured that out. I had mm. to center myself. I had to. Be, I had to center my emotion and my being and bring forward happiness when they were unhappy and they immediately aligned, right? Yeah, so I believe yeah. that children, we really have all the answers. It's through adulthood that we start to create loops and um, misgivings in our brain that edit our reality in a way that, 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 that don't allow us to take all the data in, right? So being a father, going through what I went through in, in, in my upbringing, yeah, I had these great big ideas, but there was also a return to my childhood that I needed to do and an acceptance of my own imperfections to really love my children and be with them in a way that I could connect much more spiritually than mm -hmm. I think I would have ever without that journey. Wow. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's really powerful. Absolutely, that is really, really powerful. I mean, I know that I'm, I'm a dad, right? So I've got two kids as well. Um, so I, I can relate. I can see that, you know, relating to your kids at a deeper level takes a lot of, you know, self-control. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of, you know, um, kind of preparing yourself and, and kind of psyching yourself out and, and you know, recognizing where you stand. So it's, it's about self-awareness. So everything you're saying there is really, really powerful, but it's something that you don't always kind of consciously do. Cause I know there's, you know, uh, my friends uh, who have also got kids and, you know, they find it sometimes challenging to, you know, relate to their kids at a deeper level. But you're here talking about, you know, looking at your kids at masters of energy and emotion. And then that's that's mm -hmm. mind blowing. I'm wondering if you can go a little bit deeper there and help us kind of really understand what you really mean by that and how other people can maybe, you know, uh, see their kids as masters of energy and emotion and relate to them at a deeper level there. Sure. So one example I like to give is, is like my little boy, when he was starting to walk, he must have fallen down. I don't know, a hundred times, maybe more than that, right? Yeah, yeah. But there was there was no self help book. There was no, um, you know, that, that he read so that he could align himself, give him positive thinking. You know, we have this idea of positive thinking, and it's great, mm. um, but it's really emotion is the currency of everything we do, and and getting back in touch with that. As adults, we sort of become, excuse the terminology, emotionally constipated. We shut mm. that down to some degree, right? And we don't realize that even in our own brain circuitry, everything that gets wired up here is because of emotion. Think about it. If you ask somebody, mm. what did you have for breakfast um, three days ago? They can't remember it. Why is that? It's because it doesn't have an emotional tie down, but you can remember those really dramatic happy moments yeah. and and those that are probably traumatic really easily. Mm -hmm. Now children at that age, they base so much of their experience and how they're experiencing the world on emotion. That's why you see the ups and downs. And yes, their brains are forming, but um, one way to get back in touch with that is that children demand that if, if you allow them, they demand that you're in the present moment yeah. to, to really connect with them, right? Mm -hmm. That you're not thinking that you're not living in the forward and you're not living in the past, that you're here with them right now. And that's why that's so powerful is we have the most tools and things available to us in the present moment. Mm -hmm. That's why the present moment is so powerful. We believe that if we calculate forward and backwards that somehow we're safer, but that's completely untrue. Wow, awesome, awesome. Uh, just just wanna dig a little bit deeper there. I mean, th that was really, really powerful, but, are there any tips you can give 
uh, parents in terms of how they can actually start to realign themselves or rewire their brain so they can get to that level. Because I think for most people, they're stuck in their routines. They have a daily routine right. and they go through it, you know, day in, day out, etc. So that sometimes you're not even thinking about what you're doing, right? It's just it's just autopilot. So what what, what will help people kind of rewire their brains? Because I know you, you talked about this uh, uh, quite a lot in terms of, you know, the metaphysics and, and how you rewire your brain. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I think first and foremost is, and, and it, this is probably the biggest leap. Once you once you accomplish this, then you can start helping yourself rewire your brain. Is mm. we're very married to our own echoes, right? Those those things that that reverberate in our brain, we become we become almost we all we are auto domesticating in some ways because we have a thought process, and that thought process keeps building on itself. Now. For most people, they identify with their brain patterns and their thoughts, not realizing it's their biology. One of the things that when I talk to people is I want them to exercise some bio biological forgiveness to tell mm. them that the loops oh, wow. and the patterns they're in, they're in is, 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 is not a, just a matter of who you are directly and stop blaming yourself, but these are physical pathways. Imagine the things that you do every day as 16 lane highways in your brain. Right, mm -hmm. and there are those small dirt roads, those those trails in your brain that you where you thought something different, but your mind won't necessarily go down those and you, until you start reinforcing those. But the first thing to do is to take a, a neutral uh, observer standpoint to mm -hmm. think about your thinking. In fact, neuroscientists call this metacognition. It's a it's a way that you start observing. It's like, hey, right now I'm tense. Hey, right now I'm. I'm I feel like I'm, I'm repeating behavior. I feel my anger inside of me. And you take a moment in a sort of quite a loving way, but in a way that's mostly neutral to say, you're observing your body, your position, your hands, the way you feel, and you start to separate yourself from, from thinking that that is who you are. Mm. So that's the, first, that's the first step. And that's the, that's the most challenging step because really we're, I'm suggesting to people that they think outside their thinking and people are like, what the hell does that mean, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you you mentioned biological forgiveness. Wow, like that that sounds really, really amazing. Can you go a little bit deeper there, please? Because I think people are going to find a lot of value there. Immediately as you said that, it just struck out. It just absolutely struck out with me. Can you go a little bit deeper there, please? Right, right. So, so biological forgiveness really. For me, what that means is, is that I think, I think we are so hard on ourselves. If you think about, if you look at the research on the brain, mm. the brain is inherently negatively biased. And why is that, right? Well, it, it, it serves to protect us, protect us from danger, you know? Mm. And we have a spectrum within people. Some, some people are more or less, but still all of us, fundamentally, that's the way the brain um, is wired. It, it is a protective mechanism. And you can see that is easily if you look on any internet side where people are commenting, you sometimes say, why are people commenting like this? It's because this is how the brain is, stores things, or stores things, right? Well, what if you could take a moment and you could say, you know what, all those things that I think about myself when when I have um, limiting conversations that I'm that I'm I don't carry through, I don't follow through, I don't do what I say, all of those things. Yeah, I can keep I can keep actually blaming myself and taking a hundred percent of the ownership of that, mm. or I can say, look, some of these things are as a result of my of my brain's chemistry over time. That's because the way the brain is set up and I can't I can't get out of some of these loops because my brain is made as a rec pattern recognition machine. It, it that it is primary function. So my patterns that I can't get out of are not all me. They're a result of the biology that the brain has to have. Because imagine if you had to learn every new pat learn every pattern over again every day. Our brain would be so overcome, right? We, we'd have to think yeah. about everything that we're doing. That that doesn't make that doesn't make sense. But in the same sense. Some of those patterns serve us, and some of them over time don't, right? Mm. And, hey, this is my biology. It's not me. That's what I'm asking people to forgive themselves on. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. That's powerful. 
That is really, really deep. That's I, I love that. I really love that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because most of the time, you are really hard on yourself. You do take it on yourself. You know, it's my fault. I didn't do this. I actually said this. I should have done it differently, etc. Right? And you do have those limiting conversations, those negative conversations inside your head. But yeah, that was really powerful in terms of how you just need to recognize that it's your biology that's, you know, that's wired that way. That's why yeah, it's happening to you. Yeah, absolutely. And one more thing I'd just like to add in this, sure. this idea of forgiveness is the, as far as we know, the human animal is the only, only one who can relive, relive those things that we, that we've done in the past over and over and over again, right? Mm. So you have three major brains. You have the cortical brain, which you're listening to me right now, your thinking brain, your limbic brain, which is emotional, and your cerebellum in the back. This is your reptilian brain. Right. And all those, conversations eventually get pushed down to your cerebellum where your operating system is those are unconscious my friend and at, at some period of time you don't you make these internal agreements about what you're good at and what you're not good at i i sometimes give people analogy if you could go into your cerebellum and hear all these conversations it would like be walking into a day, daycare stampede of children some children <laughs> are laughing some children are crying and it is it, bizarre you don't even know the reasons why they're doing what they're doing right yeah. but you have just like our cell phones we, we don't we don't get to see the operating system but it's there mm. and it's and it's subconsciously this this is leading to the way of our being which is which then um, filters into what we do which then filters into what we have so it's a be do have model that comes from all these conversations that get locked down here so how do you change that mm. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so, Neil, I'm, I'm thinking from the point of view of one of the viewers right now who's actually watching this. And I'm sure they're thinking, well, Neil, I'm, I'm here with Neil Falora and he is adding so much value. He's talking about biological forgiveness. He's talking about, you know, rewiring my brain. He's talking about, you know, having the limiting conversations that I need to recognize and know that there is a biological reason behind what's happening and the way I'm thinking, etc. But they might actually be wondering, well, how will it actually help me, you know, beyond parenting? How will it help me beyond, you know, just connecting with my kids? What else can I do with these superpowers? <laughs> uh, such a such a, a brilliant question you asked, my friend. And, and <laughs> yes, and so I, I really, really, the perfect question. If I, 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 sh I, I guess I'll PayPal you the $20. Uh, <laughs> for the right question. <laughs> but so so what can this do for us right so many people have seen the the secret and different things where they say okay if you think a certain way um then that can 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 pull into your life and, and people sometimes have a hard time putting all of that together they're like well i'm going to sit around and imagine a hundred thousand dollars and it's just going to come into my life mm. and so um that it seems preposterous. What I would say is, is that there's a blend between the two and it really starts with brain science. Let's think about anything that has been invented in our society, any great company, any great idea. It all started with with an idea, a thought, this, this, this circuitry in here, and yeah. that translated into a way of being, a desire, which translated into actions, which translates into it translates into one of the primary things I say is the evidence you seek seeks you, right? Ooh. The evidence you seek, seeks you, sorry, right? Say, sorry, Neil, say that again. Say that again. That was awesome. Say that again, please. The evidence that you seek yeah. seeks you. Ooh, I love that. Right? Yeah. Right. So, so, so I can go into um, quite a bit more biology of the brain without. You know, we can decide if, if that's valuable at this point, but without going into all of that right now, mm. what I can say is that your brain, your brain has mechanisms to listen to your subconscious conversation and find more of what you're thinking about. Mm. So imagine that there are millions and millions of bits of data coming at your brain, but your brain will only process a very small fraction of that. There's things in your brain that will actually filter what you see and what you hear and what you decide is coming at you, what is working for you or against you. You, you have control of that, but you, don't have, you have um, a filter built in by your subconscious conversation. Your brain is actively doing that because it says, I can't deal with all this information. I'm only gonna right. listen to what you think is important. So yeah. now imagine that we start harnessing this and that we flip it around, we purposely give ourselves 
positive experiences each day to build a network that seeks out the seeks out the kind of outcomes, the kind of life, the kind of health, all of those things that we want, and our brain starts looking for that evidence. Mm. Um, simple example of how the brain does this. Um, presumably, you shop for a car in your life, correct? You've, yeah. you've gone shopping, <laughs> car shopping with somebody, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, and and you go to the car, and and um, what's a car that you like? This some uh, that you would desire. Uh, ooh, um, any car. I, I, okay, it has to be has there has to be a Mustang, right? Has to has to be said a Mustang. Okay. A Mustang, beautiful. Yeah. Well, Mustangs are awesome. And what yeah. color? Ooh, black. What color would you like? Black, definitely black. black. Yeah. Black. So for most people, they can relate to this. They go car shopping, they go to the car dealer, they look at a black Mustang, and then they're driving around for a couple weeks thinking about the black Mustang. Mm. What happens? This what happens? Black Mustang, black Mustang. Wow, you know, I'm <laughs> seeing black Mustangs everywhere. So there are two possibilities. There are two possibilities here. Either you're some kind of VIP that you don't, you're not aware of, and yeah. that Ford dealership made a bunch of black Mustangs to drive around you to entice you, right? Or, or the black Mustangs were there the whole time. You were just filtering them out. Mm, yeah. So, so now this works for yeah. everything else. It doesn't work for what we see, what we hear, what we think. The evidence you seek seeks you. Mm, and that that's an amazing, amazing analogy that you use there um, about the car. I, I love that. I and. You know what? It it makes so much more sense about you know what you talked about before in terms of the evidence you seek seeks you. That was really powerful. But then it just makes total sense when you use the analogy, and I love that. And I think that works with kind of with anything. Like you want to buy a new phone, and then suddenly you start to see everybody else using that phone, right? Or you want to buy, let's say, you know, um, a, a certain a certain uh, house. And you go to see the house and it's like, ooh, this is nice. And then suddenly you go and everybody else is talking about <laughs> buying houses as well. You're just like, what's going on? So, yeah, yeah, I could, I could totally get that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it, it, it's, it's in some ways just um, being able to multiply your own synchronicity of how things line up in your life, right, mm. by re rewiring the brain. So this has powerful ramifications for for your peace of mind for this sacred space inside for um uh, also enjoying what you have presently being able to be grateful what you have presently but also to to source more um, opportunity i can say in the 15 months that i've jumped off the this corporate position this position that i should have never left because it had all the the bells and whistles and i've now went into entrepreneurship there's so much that has come my way but i firmly believe it's because i'm practicing these principles every day and mm. it's pulling things into my life you know um the challenge for most people is is that we we have to not have to you you in doing this process you can't be married to the time scale and how it shows up right yeah if you unmarry yourself from those two things then then, then there you remove the barriers of filters, and things come into your life, and you don't know how and when, but they, but they come. Yeah, and, and you know what? I can I can totally relate to the the timeline thing because I'm one of those people who just like I want this and I want it yesterday, right? And <laughs> it doesn't sure. show up in you know in, in, at the same rate. I want <laughs> you know things to move forward, and they're not moving forward, and I'm getting frustrated. And then people are noticing people are like, yes. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Why why are you angry? And we're like, I'm not angry, I'm just upset, you know? It's just not happening. So yeah, I can right. I can relate to that one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So Neil, I want to I want to actually um just talk about because you, you mentioned, you know, the secret and the law of attraction and, and things like that. And I know some people are just like, you know, that, that stuff is just rubbish, does not work, etc. And other people are just like, no, 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 absolutely true. I used it and look at my life completely changed, etc, etc. Where do you stand with that? Like in terms of law of attraction, is it something that is has some sort of credibility behind it? Or is it just something that is kind of you know, blown out of proportion and it's, you know, um, over advertised and, and that's why people suddenly start to, you know, uh, kind of jump on that uh, bandwagon. But then really actually what's happening is the fact that they're just looking for certain evidence that it shows up in their life because they're looking for it. 
So, you know, I think, I think it's a really a, a hybrid approach between the metaphysics and the science for me. I think now more than ever, we have evidence to support the convergence of the two. I think the scientific community used to maybe poo-poo more of this metaphysical stuff. And we're seeing, the, I, at least I see the, the blending of the two in a way that I think hasn't happened before. Um, mm. There was a great video that I watched one time about a bunch of physicists. It was called, um, What the Bleep Do I Know? But they were, they were talking about the vibration and energy of particles and that you could take two electrons that are associated with the same atom and separate them by an infinite distance. And mm. if you change the spin on one, the other one, other spin would change instantly. Oh, now, for, wow. most people, mm. so for most people, who cares about that? But mm. for me, what I translate that is, is that I think we're all energy and vibration. At the end of the day, that's mm-hmm. a, a, a music music for me is uh, is one of those big, big litmuses that shows that because from birth I've sung to my kids uh, all kinds of occasions we play music for them they responded very very early to music you know mm-hmm. from the womb right so I believe that there 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 is this vibration and when we uh, this um, brain that we have is the most powerful radio antenna in the universe mm-hmm. what we what we think and what we ruminate about sends send signals out, translates into your body from a health perspective, from a abundance perspective. And that that signal that you that you that you send out really can influence both your actions and what comes into your life, right? Yeah. Here's 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 the big challenge though, is that um, I have this Sherpa mentality for people. Um, I call it emo- an emotional Sherpa to some degree, but we are we would not leave our front door unintended and just let people come in and out. But mm-hmm. most of us are, are, are letting our thinking um, happen in a way where we're just letting thoughts come in and out without 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 shepherding without um, shepherding them through right without having this Sherpa approach about who am I where am I going to lead the path and and what's coming in and what's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. I like that. The 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 hybrid approach towards law of attraction. That's uh, that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's quite interesting. I've come across some people who absolutely believe in law of attraction and then some people are just like, nah, that stuff is just absolute rubbish. So that's quite interesting to see that actually, you know, um, there's this the sign behind it. And I think you were referring there in terms of like separating the electrons you were talking about. Uh, is that quantum entanglement? Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. Brilliant. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm a bit of a geek, so I I totally geek out on that kind of stuff. So I I, I thought that's what you were referring to there anyway, the quantum entanglement. Yeah. Yeah, there's not not too many people that just pull that out of their lips randomly like that. So bravo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just shows how big a geek I am, actually. That's all that shows. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, Neil, um, you know, for, for the people out there who actually are parents and, and then they're listening to this or, or who are actually, you know, thinking about starting a family in the future, what kind of core principle, core ideas you think are important for the parents to pass on to their kids so they can actually, you know, uh, have an abundant life. They have the, they don't are not kind of tied down in that limiting thinking or that, that paradigm that is, you know, very restricting and they actually believe that they can go and uh, achieve anything they want out there. Yeah. So if, if you are early parents or thinking about parenting, I, I think the probably one of the most important things that I did, that I thought about and also practice with my kids is is mirroring and 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 who you are at your core. So let me say two things on that. So one is a so one is an energy thing and one is a brain thing, and they both interrelate. Right. So when I, grew, when I grew up, my parents told me many things, many many wise things, many great things. Right. I did not what they told me, but who they were vibrationally, both in their private time and who they were, right? So they could tell me, hey, you can be great, you can be anything, whatever else, but unless they, 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 their person was like that and who they are and what they were about every day when they walked in a room and people sort of got their vibration, and unless that really lined up with who they were, I, I ended up being versions of my parents vibrationally not what they told me and i think that's true for everybody so mm. so one big thing is is that if you want your kids to take to to take on a certain life and you want to have a certain life they working on your home base your center and who you are and what you're thinking and feeling every day is extremely important yeah. the second thing here is that we have 
neurons in our brain that are actually called motor neurons. They, this is why watching a TV show is so fun mm. because we don't have to be doing the experience, but watching somebody else gives us the perception that we are actually doing it, right? Yeah. So, so more than anything else is, is working on your own modeling so that you, that you are, that you are training your own neurons, but you also are, are behaving and acting in a way that it, Basically, you shouldn't really have to say a lot to your kids, but if you are behaving and acting in a certain way, they're going to get it, right? We think that if we keep pounding and we keep saying and we keep giving ultimatums and if we push it and we have all these systems, which you need some of that. Yeah. I fall victim to some of that parent when things get out of control. But more than anything else is, is how you show up trains their motor neurons to, to understand how to show up as well. Something happens and falls on the floor instead of saying, bless it, they, you know, Cuss words, I'm like, that's amazing, and I laugh, right? <laughs> how are you hand, How are you handling things, right, in mm. front of your kids for yourself and for you? We, we, we Simple things like we didn't um, – I didn't want to use a bunch of negatives because the brain doesn't respond to negatives very much, very well, and I don't believe the universe responds very much because mm. if you keep saying, I don't want this, I don't want this – that's what you're, it's more about what you're focusing on, mm. not what you're saying, what not what you're, so that negative energy is pulling in more of what you don't want. So for my children, I, I try not to keep saying no all the time. I would say, choose something else, right? Yeah. Choose something else. Yeah. You did, instead of, you're bad, you didn't make, you, you, this, 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 this wasn't a great decision. Make a different one. And I mean, they were little. They were six and seven, five months when I started saying, choose something else. But they, mm. Talal, they got the energy. It was amazing. They, wow. I would say to them, choose something. They would look at me, and they would stop fussing with something, right? Mm. They didn't understand the words, but they understood the energy, mm. right? Oh, you're, you're not talking about understanding energy, and, and, and I'm getting, like, all goosebumps and, and chills <laughs> because of that. Now, this is awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go there. Let's talk about understanding energy. I love that. So what is it? What is it about understanding energy that is so universal that you don't even need to speak you don't even need to you know uh, use language or words to communicate what you're trying to say what what is it about this energy that's so special yeah i mean this 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 starts to get into the woo woo factor here a little bit <laughs> beyond quantum no, entanglement <laughs> yes yeah, beyond yeah, yeah, quantum yeah. entanglement yeah okay yeah what, what I would say is without, without, without sort of broaching the, the, the sort of tabooness of, of spiritual beliefs and so forth with people, mm. um, but I think most of the human beings on earth can agree that there's something more to us than flesh and bones, right? That there's something more to us than, than that. There's a, there is a spirit and that some kind of spirituality that people believe in, myself included. And I think um, that transcends um, all of the perceived um, differences, you know, if you think about um, our journey here on earth, um, my perception of it is, is one day I was thinking about, okay, all the things that I went through in life that got that and, 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 and thinking about the hardships. And then I thought, what if, not that it's the truth, but what if um, I had a different version where um, myself and um, and all of these other people, these roadblocks, these hardships, we decided prior that I was tough enough to handle this. And they were not roadblocks, but they were teachers. And that we had agreed previously that they would keep remediating my lessons, keep giving me these roadblocks, not because it was unfair or unjust, but because they and I agreed that we were powerful enough to handle it. Mm. And it would galvanize me to the next level of power and contribution, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a reframe of kind of how you see your life. I mean, we think we, we again, you know, uh, we think we have the truth about why things happen to us and why things don't. But shifting the energy of that um, is, why, is, is how um, we're able to relate to one another. I, I think even all of the color differences and the feature differences, maybe that is a real test for us as we get here to understand that none of those things matter. That really, how I see people as connective and reflective, and you get that our differences are so much subtle, but we're given this opportunity to learn that we can have to look past all of these these surface differences in a way to see that connection and reflection. When you experience your greatness, that's because 
I, when I experience my greatness, that's because it's reflected back from somebody else. Because I see it in somebody else, I can experience it in me. Mm, I love that. I absolutely love I don't, that. I went real, real out there now. So you, you want to go deep. No, it's good. It's good. It's, I mean, we, we want to go deep in all this stuff because, you know, it's the, the like I said, the, the deeper you dig, the more understanding you get. OK, and sometimes it, it's you don't understand the big picture. But guess what? You do get pieces of the puzzle. And then over time, as you get exposed to more and more of these concepts, you start to see the bigger picture. Right. So there might be somebody who's you know out there watching this right now and they're thinking, well, I kind of get it, but I don't kind of get it. It doesn't make sense, but it does at the same time. I'm not sure. Well, that's fine. That's okay. It's, it's nothing. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. Just don't stop. Just keep you know exploring. And the more you explore, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you understand. And the more you understand, okay. obviously, the, 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 the better the experience is in this life, right? Absolutely. And one thing I say to people when I'm sitting down with them and are talking or, or mentoring is people have it that they're, they're struggling at a level and they think that they're, they're trying to find the path, whatever else. And people say, you know, I, I, I see myself doing this behavior, um, sabotaging myself in, in the situation and I'm frustrated with it. I just don't know how to get beyond this. And what I say to them is, I say, look, awareness itself, awareness itself doesn't mean you're trying to find the path or trying to find the start line. Mm. Awareness itself means you're at least a third of the way down the path already. Oh wow! Yeah. Again, it's how you have it, right? Right? Mm. People are like, oh, I'm struggling with this, but, I, but, and they're very clearly detailing how they're stuck how um, they're aware of it and they can see that again the metacognition they can see their own behavior and I'm like look you're not you're not at the start you're not trying to find your ticket to run the race and you don't know where to start you're already halfway done running it right mm. because you have awareness you have the awareness of it now release the energy of you you haven't started and start using the energy I'm down the path and you'll go farther yeah 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 absolutely absolutely awesome so Neil, can we quickly talk about your book? Uh, um, uh, um, I, I'm sorry. There, there, there is no, there is no book. I don't, I, I, um, I don't have, I don't, I've not offered a book yet. I'm in the process of writing one, but I don't have a book out yet. So uh, okay, cool. <laughs> it's just as you mentioned something before, and I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't realize you had a book, but okay, fine. So you're in the process of writing it. No. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's a longer journey, but yes, yeah, so I'm in the process of writing it. So yeah. Awesome, awesome. Can we can we get a, maybe a, a tiny sneak peek on, on what the book is going to be about? Wow. So yeah. So so really, um, what I want, what I'm I'm first designing is a video course. I'm going to start as a video course, but it's going to be about flow. Okay. How do we how do we achieve this idea of, of flow? Mm. Um, ironically. Um, this came up from a, from a, somebody I was I was talking to who was thinking about sitting down with me with, for some men, brain mentorship, co and she asked about flow. And then um, I've been thinking about it. I've been writing about that. And then right. um, when you sent me a uh, invitation, I noticed on one of your connections that somebody had actually was talking about that subject. And I thought, aha, there is the universe <laughs> giving me a sign that I'm on the right path. Yeah. So, so how do we how do we um, align ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, um, spiritually in a way that we can harness the, the we can harness a flow in our lives so that we don't feel like we're always struggling, even if there's struggle that we can still flow, even if there's hardships that we still can open ourselves to find the next answer and to keep moving forward, right? So, yeah. that in essence was is the the gist of the book. So, awesome, awesome. Um, I, I'm. Are you f familiar with um, the Flow Genome Project? I I've seen it because of the things that I saw on your on your, but I have I have no real familiarity with it. No. Okay, okay. So I'm I'm just mentioning it because it might be of interest to you. So um, sure, Flow, sure. Flow Genome Project was started by um, Stephen Kotler um, and Jamie Wheel. And Jamie Wheel is like, he's right at the cutting edge of, of this stuff, you know, in terms of flow and it's how to hack flow and how to actually, you know, um, achieve flow and all sorts of other stuff. And they actually wrote a book called Stealing Fire, 
which talks about different ways you can achieve flow and you know how it's been discovered you know over over the centuries by different people and uh, what people right. are doing right now to actually hack into flow and, and achieve flow states um things like that so I, i'm just mentioning this simply because it might be of interest to you oh absolutely absolutely i'll have to check it out so for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank I, I, you I, I will say this, though. I've read the book Stealing Fire, which is written by Stephen Cartler and Jamie Wheel. Um, and it's probably the the book that made um, everything else clear to me. Um, so everything that, you know, all the questions that you have, that those subliminal questions that's going on in the back of your head, which you don't really kind of verbalize or write down all the time, but you're just kind of like, you know, how does this work and how does that make sense, et cetera, et cetera. It, it just clarified everything for me. It's, it's kind of like the book I've been waiting for, the ultimate revelation for me. It was Amazing. definitely. So, um, yeah, if you get a chance, please do check it out. I, I would highly recommend that. Oh, for sure. For sure. I appreciate that. No worries. No worries. I'll send you some links afterwards anyway, so you can you can check out the stuff. And there's an interview with Jamie Wheel that Tom Billy did on his show Impact Theory and stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll send that over. It's pretty awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. So... At the moment, Neil, um, what what are you doing? Um, you know, obviously you're in, in uh, you're an entrepreneur now, and, and you're helping people with their brain training, um, you know, and, and rewiring their brains and understanding like how they work, etc. So, what what is the common like um, or, or the set of common uh, issues that people face that you come across or the common limiting beliefs that people have about themselves that you come across but it's something that you you see a pattern in that again and again the same thing comes yes yes I mean I think one of the easiest and most prevalent patterns in everyone um, is this idea of um, um, life happening to me mm, so yeah. it's this, this leading leading paradigm of life happening to me so it's this hatchet that's coming at their at them right and, and they see and so when I sit down with people they feel like it's very important to tell me their story right and so when I coach one of the things that um, I set out in in sort of an agreement saying hey I want you to be very happy um, whether it's a corporate coaching or, or individual coaching I want you to be very happy with our relationship one of the things that I want to let you know is that it may be in the first session we will spend some time listening to um, to understand where you come from is and all of that but beyond that we are not going to focus on your story anymore mm -hmm. or things that happen on a daily basis that are part that is a similar part of your story in fact we're going to focus on the total opposite because we're going to give your brain a a, a toehold a, a a place to hold on to and yeah. we're going to build a different image in your brain and so what I find it very common is is people want to share their stories it's a mm. water cooler effect right let me tell you how things are happening for me who did what to me how things haven't worked out for me um, and that's okay I don't I don't I don't have any judgment on that because we all do it myself included right regardless of my brain retraining I do it as well yeah. um, but that's that's the most upfront common theme and so how do we how do I get people to um, start focusing on something different every day and shutting their story down or their need to if they don't tell their story to to other people they're telling it to themselves so one thing I say to people is that so many people are worried about do you understand this term kool-aid is that transferable right so many people are worried about drinking the kool-aid of society but I said here's the dirty truth I said that you're making and drinking your own Kool-Aid every day, so get over it, right? I mean, that's where it's coming from. <laughs> I like that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not a harsh person, but I, that sometimes you need a little bit of shock factor to wake people up to say, mm -hmm. look, you know, you see all these external factors and you think that that's what's influencing you? No, you got your own brand that you're making every day and you're bathing in it, you're a fish in water that you don't, but how do you know that you're in water? Mm -hmm. It's all around you. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Awesome. Awesome. I absolutely love that. And it's a, such a different approach because you, you, you just tell your clients, look, we're not talking about your story. Okay, clean slate. Let's move on. And I love that because most of the time it's about exploring the story and going back and what did you feel about this and that. Like, you're just like, no, let's just move on. And I love that. That's awesome. I absolutely love it. Cool. Thank well, thank you. you. Thank you so much for that, Neil. Um, towards the end, I just like doing a quick rapid fire round, like, you know, just a couple or two, three questions very, very quickly before we wrap up. Is that okay? 
Perfect. Awesome. Cool. So first of all, Neil, uh, if you were a Jedi and you could use the Force to do anything you wanted, what would you be doing right now? Oh my gosh, I would be traveling the world. <laughs> I'd be traveling the world, seeing everything and meeting everyone. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. That's really cool. Something I want to do as well. So yeah, totally can relate with that. Totally can relate with that. Hopefully traveling in a black Mustang, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> awesome right Neil next thing um, if you were deserted on a desert island for a whole year right and you could take any three people in the world with you that are not family or friends okay any three other people which three people will you pick and why wow any three people that were not family and friends um I would pick um, an amazing thinker, somebody I could share ideas with. I'm trying to think who that would be. Um, I would pick a, uh, somebody like Dave Ram, uh, uh, not uh, who, uh, Anthony, Cor uh, Anthony Bourdain, so he could cook amazing meals. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to eat food. <laughs> well, he'll have a. And, um, It'll be an interesting right. to see what he what he manages to find on a desert island, yeah, and what, right. he can, what he can make out of it. Yeah, that would be an interesting experiment. Um, right, and um, I would pick um, somebody who was an expert in telecommunications, so I could get off the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. I like that. I like that. And. Um, Finally, Neil, last question. How important is it to surround yourself with the right people to help rewire your brain? It's everything. It's, it's, it's everything. And, and it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a commensal effect. As you rewire your brain, you mm. start to attract different people. As you surround yourself with different people, you're rewiring your brain. So it's hand in hand, but it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, of the utmost importance, right? People say you're the five people that you, that you average you hang around. That's because these motor neurons and our vibration is being shared and it's everything. So yeah, couldn't say enough about that. Awesome. For sure. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Right, Neil, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You are absolutely amazing. I love the fact that we managed to connect and, and do this interview. I think people find a lot of value in this. My question to you right now is what is it that you're working on that we can help you with? So um, I'm building, it's not, yeah, it's, it's sort of, I've been building it my whole life, but I'm really putting out there in the universe now, this brand that I call the Brain Warrior. Um, so um, you can find me at, at Neil Falora on Facebook or um, on Twitter, um, but I'm also building this brand awareness uh, surrounding the hashtag the Brain Warrior and putting out videos, coaching for that. So um, if you can find me, subscribe to my Facebook. Um, like, uh, if you like my posts or you want to see some topics that um, are interesting to you for me to talk about or to bring about, um, I would love to hear your suggestions. So yes, please, thank you. Awesome, awesome, that's great. Um, I'm really looking forward to actually, you know, connecting with you over the long term as well um, and, you know, seeing how this actually pans out and I wish you all the best with The Brain Warrior. Um, you mentioned Facebook and Twitter. Is there any other way people can get in touch with you if you wanna get in touch with you or Facebook are, and Twitter are the best ones? Facebook and Twitter, or you can just email me at my first name. It's N-E-A-L at thebrainwarrior.com. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Awesome. So what, uh, yep. if, if you don't mind, um, just sending me the links and stuff and I'll put everything below in the description of the video so people can just click on it and, and go straight uh, onto whichever platform they want to connect you uh, with you on. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Neil, this has been absolutely yes. tremendous. Thank you so much again for being here. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved, enjoyed every moment of it. And I can't believe that we've been talking for about 50 minutes or, or, or over <laughs> that now. It's just been phenomenal. Yeah. Dalal, I, I so much appreciate your energy, your questions, your mindset, your your, your geekiness, because that's been <laughs> with me. It's been, it's been a blast. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Awesome, Neil. Well, that's great. Guys, uh, 
let's say thanks to Neil for being here with us. He's absolutely amazing. I mean, come on. He was he just added so much value to me, to you, to everybody else. I learned a lot. I'm sure you guys learned a lot as well. I will highly encourage you to take action though. As always, reach out. How amazing would it be if all of you reached out to Neil right now and said, Neil, you were awesome. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. We really appreciate it. That's it. You don't have to say a lot, but just reach out and say uh, thanks to Neil and start a conversation, right? Just start the conversation. You don't know where it's going to go. I mean, me and Neil, we just ended up connecting on LinkedIn, but we didn't even know that we actually have a, like a close group of friends who are like the same, like we hang around with the same people. We had no idea. We jumped on a call. We start talking. We're like, oh my God, like, do you know this guy? Do you know that guy? It, it was amazing. So, you know, you don't know where it goes. Okay. You don't know what the other person um, is, can help you with. Okay. So seriously, reach out to Neil. He is very open, very kind, very giving. And most importantly, he is there to actually add value, right? And that's why he was so kind and generous to dedicate, you know, his most precious resource, his time to be here with us, to add value to us. And, you know, I cannot appreciate that enough. Um, every guest that I bring on, my goal is to serve you guys. Every guest that I try to bring on, my goal is to actually help them move forward in their path as well. So, Neil, um, I hope that you enjoyed this because I absolutely did. And I'd love to have you back for round two sometime. Absolutely. It would be my pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Neil. Guys, as always, um, it's been a pleasure to serve you guys. And I am really, really appreciative of the fact that you take this time and spend this time with me on this show. This is your show. I'm Talal, your host, and I will catch you hopefully in the next one. Neil, thank you so much. Guys, all the best. Thank you.